So I saw this quote today that said, don't marry a rich man, marry a good man. Now, I agree. That doesn't mean marry a broke man. <laughs> and it don't mean you need to be dating a broke man, all right? But listen, the, the fact of the matter is, most women don't want to. And I don't think we really have to dive into the whole dating broke men right now. However, there are a lot of women, might be one of you, that desire to date a man who has some money. Now, I know some of you are going to say money is not important, it's not an issue, but I still think a lot of women don't understand what comes with dating a man with money. A lot of women say they want it, all right, or would love to have it, the idea of it, but they don't understand what comes along with it. So I want to break down some things you need to know about dating a man with money. Now, before I begin real quick, let me make this very clear. When I talk about a man with money, because it's hard to kind of quantify what is a man with money, all right? I'm just going to put it as a man who is doing well enough to where he can provide for you and, you know, provide for the household with no problem. Like, he does not need your income to... to pour into the household to be able to hold things up, all right? So that's what we're going to use. So whatever amount that is, because of course, depending on the, the country, the state, the city that you're in, the amounts will vary. So we're just going to use that as the measuring tool to determine if he has money, all right? So the first thing, and man, this is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> the first thing you need to know about dating a man with money is that he does not care about your money, all right? Here's why I'm very passionate about this one specific point. I see a lot of messages out there that tell women, you got to be what you want in a man. Essentially, if you want some successful rich man, well, then you need to be successful and have money too. And that's dead wrong. Now, listen, if you want to go get your money, go get it. Or if you already have the money, bravo to you, awesome. But to, to think that this is a requirement to get a man with money is misguided. It is inaccurate, all right? Here's the reality. Men with money will damn near, not even damn near, will marry the woman who's a cashier at Chick-fil-A, all right? Meaning they don't care. They don't care about your status, your job. Now, I already hear some of you saying, well, I see men who marry all about status. There are always going to be exceptions to this situation. And the ones that you see who put an emphasis on the status of a woman typically are aspiring to some different things. Like, for example, if he's an aspiring politician, he may have greater concern about her background, her education, the family she came from, things of that nature. Depending on the type of family he came from, they may apply a lot of pressure on the man about the type of woman they marry and that she has to meet standards in their eyes. But when you speak to the man himself, all right, and typically the man who has money, they don't care. Typically that man is not going to discount a woman because she is not financially well off or not at the same level as him financially. Hell, not even, she doesn't even have to be close to him, all right? And it's two things, two reasons why it's very important that women understand and embrace that. One, let's start with the woman who doesn't have money. I've seen women who do not have money themselves, all right, who are not financially well off, maybe even broke, become intimidated or question their value to that kind of a man and, and even sabotage relationships with men who had money because it's almost like, what, why is he choosing me? What, what do I really bring to the table here that is of a value to him. You know, it's almost like trying to get that person who has everything a Christmas gift. You know, it's like, well, what can I get? That? I don't know what to do here. And that can make people feel inadequate. But I want women to understand, no, do not evaluate your value based on your financial status. That's not the key here at all. I don't really want you to do that in general, but especially it's unnecessary with a man with money. Now, the on the flip side... There's the woman who has success, who has money. And what happens is, unfortunately, you lose sight of the other qualities that man with money is looking for in a woman. So you have women who feel like 
their status, their money should qualify them, quote unquote, for a man with money. And though on paper, they're, they, they're, that may be true to a certain extent on paper because it looks good, right? That's not how it plays out. That's not the reality of what these men are looking for. Now, let me, let me also say this, all right? Because I said this is very near and dear to my heart and I want to be transparent, all right? I am speaking both from colleagues, from personal experience, you know, me being that kind of a man. And, and so, and, and, I'm, and I'm definitely trying to leave all bias out of this. So I don't want you to think that because I'm in that category that I can't see this the right way. No, because I am going off what I've seen in other situations, talking, my coaching, and yes, even a lot of personal experiences as well. So I just want to throw that in there real quick. So that you understand where I'm coming from with a lot of this and, and why the passion might be there on certain points, all right? Because I'm living it, right? So uh, getting back to the point at hand, the, the other woman with money loses sight of what else is important, all right? But let me also break down for you in a very, what I believe is a very logical way of looking at it as to why your money would not be important to the man with money. And then after that, I'm going to tell you the, the exceptions to this rule or the, the cases where you see a man with money actually caring about your money and what's really going on there. So first, the reason why the man with money does not care about your money is because, again, men are very practical beings. And there's a joke. I, I can't remember if it was Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, one of them. Where it was like, it, you know, men like nice things because women like nice things. Men get a nice house because women like a nice house. If a man could have sex in a cardboard box, <laughs> he would, you know, because that, that's all he needs to get it done. Man, it is what it is. So a lot of men uh, typically are creatures of, all right, if this, is, if this gets me what I want, this gets me what I need, I'm good there. I don't have to keep adding more, right? And when it comes to finances, what I think some people may lack an understanding in is that there's a certain level of money where once you passed it, it does not change your day-to-day -day life, all right? So if, for example, let's just say this man is making $200,000 a year, all right? Now, mind you, $200,000 in the U.S., only 1.5% of individuals make that or more. All right, so this is a very small population, but let's just say he makes two hundred thousand, and in that two hundred thousand dollars, he's able to do everything. He can pay for the house, the cars, your car. He can put money away from savings. He can uh, invest money, or he already has investments. Because listen, if he's been making that money for a while, then he's probably debt free at this point, or he may be whatever. So let's say he has that all mapped out. He's good. He's living the life he wants. He he goes out, eat what he wants, whatever. Right. Woman comes along, she's making 80 grand a year. All that 80 grand does for him is give more money to invest. Not saying that's a bad thing, but that doesn't change the day-to-day -day life. That doesn't really impact where he is. Granted, can, it allows those two people to build a bigger empire, so to speak, if that's even important to him. Because again, a lot of men, once they reach that point of, I'm good, that's it. They don't need more than that. So for that reason, this is where the woman's money becomes almost irrelevant. The benefit in that situation is, okay, if she has her own money, well, yeah, does, does it take some stress off of him as far as having to always give her money when she wants to go buy something? Or she may feel like, Okay, that gives her the freedom to spend her money as she pleases without having to talk to anybody about it. And, and let's be real. If you guys move into marriage, well, you're still going to talk about finances regardless. But the point is that this is the reason why it, it, just, it doesn't move the needle anymore. All right? So now, why do we then see some situations where men have quote-unquote money, right? Or at least they're presenting themselves as such. And yet they seem to care about the woman's money. Because I'm sure some of y'all do see that. And there are some men online who will say that. Well, number one reason that I see that when a man actually cares about your money and he has money. Well, let me first say this. If he cares about your money and he has money to the point that 
he's going to ask you to go 50-50, that man's not in love with you. Let, let's just knock that out right now. He ain't in love. There's something completely wrong there. I've never seen a man who's in love with money who is unwilling to provide for his partner, unwilling to take some financial burden off of her, all right? Even if it's not 100% on him, it, it, it might be 60, 40, 70, 30. He's going to take a bigger portion. I, I've never seen anything otherwise, all right? One is truly, he's in love with her. So there's that. The other reason why a man's going to be care, caring about your money is because he's already been damaged and traumatized by being used for his money, all right? So I've noticed this pattern. And I've even, I, to be completely honest with you, I've seen it with a lot of even uh, athletes, all right, who have experienced being used, having women they can't trust always being around them, to now they view the woman having money as a safety. It's almost like, okay, well, if she has her own, then she doesn't just want me for mine. You know, it, 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 it gives them a, a sense of security in the relationship. That's not healthy. You know what I'm saying? If that's his reasoning, which I understand why it's happening, but if that's his reasoning, that needs to be resolved and addressed or addressed and resolved. So you, we, we can't make that an acceptable scapegoat to him caring about your money. The other scenario that I've seen where a man cares about your money is because he don't really make that kind of money, <laughs> right? Like he, he may be presenting himself as such or he's just really bad with money to where he still needs your money as a cushion. He still needs that extra, that extra cash flow coming in. So if he's at that place, or again, he just doesn't really have it like that, or his money is more momentary. Uh, for example, maybe he's into a fast money life. I'm, I'm not going to get into specific <laughs> activities that fall under fast money, but we're just going to say, yeah, maybe he's doing some things that aren't legal, all right, or considered legal. I don't know, but the point is, Sometimes, depending on how that man is living, yes, if he doesn't think his money is a constant coming in, he will be more concerned with what the woman has. But other than those two reasons, he does not care. So bottom line, I, I really want women to understand there's so much, when you're, if you're gonna date a man with money, your, your money cannot be what you use as your, uh, what, what, what do you call it? The, the badge on your, what is it? The badge on your shoulder? Badge of honor. <laughs> Thank you. Badge of honor. I don't know why my brain just went blank. But the badge of honor, you, you, you can't hang your hat on that, all right? Like, again, it's nice, it's cool, but there are bigger, more important things, and I'm going to explain that to you as we go further. All right, so that was, I, I had to, there was a lot of energy in that when I had to pour out, all right? So, <laughs> Excuse me for that first one being a bit long. But moving on to the second thing that you need to know about dating a man with money is that money doesn't always equal generous, all right? So listen, some men are stingy, all right? And, and the reason for the stinginess could be kind of what I mentioned before in the previous point as far as one, they're just not that serious about you to even allow themselves to be generous or they've been burnt before by women so that has caused them to be stingy. Hell, they may have just always been stingy people and not learned how to come out of that, what I'm going to call a poverty mindset. Because I, I feel like when you are so tight with your money, it's almost like you have this fear that you you, 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 you got to hold on to every dollar. And that's kind of a poverty mindset in the sense that you, you just, you're just always preparing yourself for losing it all or something like that. You're not letting it flow freely. And, and to me... From a spiritual perspective, I've even had to learn. I've always been a generous person, but I had to learn to break past any kind of fears because to me, God provides for me. And so I don't have to worry about, well, uh, am I going to go broke tomorrow? No, like God bless me with it. I can bless others in various ways. And that's how I go about things. But moving along, it's important that you understand that you don't get caught up simply in how much the man makes when you're dating him that you pay attention to how he handles his money. Does he even tip? That might sound stupid to some people, but no, like pay attention. If this man doesn't even give tips, there's a good chance. I'm not saying that no person who doesn't tip can't still be generous. Some people are just sticklers when it comes to service at a restaurant, and maybe that's the case. So if it was that one action alone, okay, cool. But if you notice he doesn't tip, 
Then it's other things he doesn't do. Then he always seems to like, whenever there's a spending of money on other people or on you, you there's this discomfort sometimes you can sense within him. <laughs> like, it's all like it hurts their heart when they got to take that money out their wallet or their card out their wallet, okay? If you start to pick up on these things, you, you got to understand, be mindful of what you're getting yourself involved in and have discussions. I know that's difficult to discuss money and discuss how a man handles his money, but I do think we have to find a way to gain an understanding of, okay, at least once we get to a point where we decide we want to get into a relationship, I do think we need to have discussions about how we both are with money, how we both see money, you know what I'm saying? And understanding, okay, are you dealing with a very uh, frugal or stingy individual, all right? Or is this person going to be generous at least when it comes to you? It's one thing if they want to be frugal and stingy with other people, but if they're going to be frugal and stingy with you too, are you going to be okay with that? If you are, then okay, write it out, make it happen. But otherwise, I, I, I wouldn't move forward. So just be mindful of that because I see so many women getting caught up in the number of what the man makes and not evaluating that aspect as well as how does he manage his money. So one quick point I'm going to make before I move on to the next thing. Not that this always will happen or that everyone gets to see this, but if you're ever dealing with a man who quote unquote has money or you at least believe he does, and he's you find him asking people to borrow small amounts of money. I need to borrow $100 real quick. I need to borrow $200 real quick. It, again, one time, maybe something went wrong. Multiple times, this is a clear sign to me at least, and, and some of you may disagree, this is poor money management. How do you have money? Again, we qualify what that means earlier. How do we have money and you're in a position that you have to borrow like this? That means either you're, you don't have money accessible to you easily, which to me, that's poor money management. You don't have credit that you can use to handle in, in, use in situations like this. Again, that's still poor money management as far as I'm concerned. All right. Or you are spending your money as quickly as you get it. And, you, and you're because listen, someone can have money or, you know, be making a lot of money and still live check to check. Don't get it twisted. It happens. So you got to pay attention to these things because, again, money does not equal generous and money does not always equal being good with money. So now moving on to number three, and this is another one that's kind of near and dear to my heart. And that is his time is maybe more limited. All right. Now, I know we always say a person makes time for what they want. And I'm not disagreeing. I'm not saying that even men who have money or, and more specifically, because a man could have money and not be a busy guy. Right. Depending on how he got it. But if he's an entrepreneur, he works a certain kind of job, there's a lot of hours, things of that nature, he's a lot busier. This is where it's different. And though I agree that a man will make time for what he wants, we still have to understand that his time is more limited compared to the next man. So the man who may work a regular nine to five job, so to speak, all right? And once he leaves that job, he leaves his work at that job. He's able to do that. He has X, what is, what is it, 16 more hours, whatever, in the day, uh, minus other activities, to possibly make time for you, all right? The entrepreneur, the, the businessman, guys who might be lawyers, doctors, working in, in the leagues, NFL, NBA, these guys have jobs that demand even hours outside of the normal work schedule, typically. And therefore, they may, where the first guy had 16 hours, let's say they only have eight hours of the day that they could out, out of where they can carve out time for you. So again, can they still make time? Yes, but they may not be as available. They may not be able to accommodate as easily as the other guy will. Not because they don't care about you, serious about you, whatever, but again, their life is a little bit different. And so this is where, as a woman, you do have to ask yourself, can I be okay with that? Can I be okay with, again, I, I want to make clear, he still needs to make time for you. There still has to be a, a, a good life-work balance, in my opinion. But again, 
it's harder for that guy. And there's going to be some moments where things change or he's not as able to do it. But you as a woman, can you handle that? And, and I think it's important to understand this. What I have seen and what I have learned is that there are different people are wired differently. There are women out there who need more attention. All right. Not even from an unhealthy perspective. They just value quality time more. They value closeness more. They want more of it. That's more important to them than gifts, than the bills being paid. All right. They want that time as a lot of it. All right. And so they need a man who is in a position to be able to pour into them in that way. All right. For, for the relationship to really be at its best. But then there are other women who are, I'll just use the word, more free-spirited. And again, it's not to make one better than the other. It's just describing two different types of women. And this type of woman doesn't mean she doesn't value quality time, but she, she can enjoy more time by herself. She's good that. She's good doing her own thing, venturing off, whether it be friends, family, whatever. She's just a free bird flying around. And, and then when she's able to spend time with her man, she's all in and completely indulged in the moment, but she doesn't need as much of the moment, all right, as consistently as maybe the other woman. So that woman may be better tailored to the, 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 the man with money, the man who's busy, all right? And again, there are men who make money, who work a nine to five set schedule, and they may be able to still accommodate better. So it's, it's also about the career type that that individual is in. But also I want to add this. What a woman has to understand also when you're dating a man with money, and again, more specifically, the man who is entrepreneur, works extra hours, lawyers, doctors, all these things, is the issue of mental exhaustion. Now, I wholeheartedly believe this is an issue that exists with a lot of women in various ways that men need to better understand as well. So I'm not acting like this only happens to men, but this video is about dating a man with money. And so what I've seen, and, and I'll be very honest, what I've even experienced is sometimes a woman wanting your time, maybe to talk, right? But even though you are physically available, mentally you are beat. You are drained. You don't have the energy right now to process conversation and to be, or to at least be truly present in the conversation and, and to pour into them the way they're going to need. So instead, you, you need more, you need a break. You need to pull away. Not again, not because you don't love the woman, care about her, all these things, but because you just need to recharge. And so I think it's important to understand when you're dating these type of men, that there is a level of, yes, they may be physically available, but they are not always mentally available. And it's about finding that balance that allows them to have that recharge, that, that moment of peace from all the hustle and bustle they go through. And then that way, when you guys come together and do talk, it's higher quality rather than to a drained person or two drained person trying to carry along a conversation. All right, so now let's keep this going. And the next thing you need to understand about dating a man with money is it's the other things that matter, all right? I mean the other things aside from the money. So remember I mentioned earlier, the man with money typically does not care about a woman's money. What does he care about? He cares about the way that she talks to him, how she makes him feel around him, his attraction to her and her willingness to maintain that attraction to him, the way that she pours into him, that feminine energy, you know what I'm saying? All these things, that's what he's looking for or he's going to be more drawn to. And, and let me put that into perspective. And, and I'm going to use again me in, in this specific example, all right? Because I feel like maybe sometimes I can articulate it better than maybe the, the, the average man may be able to. I look at it as... I have to be able to get from my partner the things that I cannot get elsewhere, all right? Meaning, some women may say, oh, well, you should value a woman who's good with money or can manage the money. That's a great, that's a great quality. Not knocking that at all, right? But I can get an accountant. 
I can get a financial advisor. You see what I'm saying? Oh, well, she needs to know how to clean the house really good. That would be great. That would be awesome. But I can hire a housekeeper. I can, I can get someone. And again, we're talking about men with money here. They have the resources to get some of these things done elsewhere. What they can't get done elsewhere is, again, sexual fulfillment, hopefully within marriage. All right, just throw that in there. But, <laughs> okay. They can't get that elsewhere without violating the relationship. All right. Um, hell, even though this is a tricky one, the cooking... He can technically get that elsewhere. Because I like for me, you know, you can hire a meal prep or a chef or whatever. No big deal, right? But if you're a woman who cares about your man eating food from someone else, because some women do care, well, again, that's another thing. Well, he, he needs to be able to get from the woman that he's with, or at least, you know, or under her management, so to speak. All right. However, she handles putting that food on the plate, on the table. Um, again, the attraction, the the intimacy. You know, all these things, the conversation, because if, if the man seeks that elsewhere, it can now cause problems in the relationship. So this becomes a priority for the man with money, because, again, the other things he can get. Now, it doesn't mean that men with money simply want to go out there and hire housekeepers and chefs and all these kind of things. And again, it depends on where that man is at financially. Not every man is there. The point, though, is. What's going to be higher on his list of priorities are those intangibles that we're talking about. So, yes, he may still want and still value the woman who's good with money, the woman who knows how to manage things, so on and so forth. And I do think even a man with money would want a woman who can manage the household very well. I do think that's going to be important for a lot of men because, again, if that man is grinding and he's out there he's, he's in you know working hard he needs to know that he has a woman at home that can hold things down and everything's gonna run smoothly you know what i'm saying that that brings balance and peace to the whole relationship but this is where the value really comes in this is what attracts that man more than anything rather than oh well she makes money too and because granted think about this someone will say okay well i make money so yeah i can i can go buy the pay for the cook i can go pay for the housekeeper okay that's great but if you're not doing the other things what what is that good what good does that do for the relationship you know what i'm saying like that's what you have to understand it's the deeper stuff that he needs because he has gotten to a point in his life where he can afford those daily necessities of, of, of you know upkeep so to speak but it's the intangibles in the relationship that's going to speak more to his heart. So real quick, my guy, John Mark, my videographer, just brought a point to me and that we should touch on. And he talks about how he was saw on TikTok how uh, basically the phrase of making a house a home. All right. Asking women, OK, well, what can you do for that kind of a man? And they say, oh, I can make a house a home. But no one ever understands what does that really mean. So to give you a quick rundown, one is creating peace in the household. All right. No man who's dealing with the craziness of the world wants to come home to the craziness of the household. All right. He does not want to come home to unruly kids. He does not want to come home to a bunch of mess. He doesn't want to come home to, the, to his partner stressing him out about unnecessary things. Or even if it's necessary discussion that need to be had, again, there's a time and place to have those discussions. So it's about creating a peaceful environment in the home. It's about creating an environment that makes the man want to be home. Not saying he shouldn't want to be home already, but again, you, you got you, you to gotta make it something that draws people back there. So it's that peaceful environment. It's that, that lovingness, and that intimacy that he gets from you, all right? And, and yes, keeping it real, that sexual fulfillment, of course, hopefully in marriage, but that sexual fulfillment that, you know, allows him to feel like that's going to bring him home. That's going to make him want to be there. It, it's that it's that positivity. It, it's that valuing of him and his presence. All right. It is also a clean home. However, that's accomplished, whether it is accomplished through getting outside help or the woman taking care of it. Clean home is going to matter, too. So all these different things contribute to that man or making the, the home that happy place for that man to come home to. Um, and, and that brings greater value. And, and also, again, 
being able, and this is where being able to be re- self reliant enough as a woman where you can handle the little things without burdening him with it. So it's like, okay, if something happened with the insurance, all right, and you got to call the insurance company, he don't want to have to come home and you're like, oh, baby, can you call the insurance? Like, so you couldn't do that? You were home today and you couldn't call the insurance? If you're a woman who's not working, you know, um, and even if you, I mean, regardless, it, it's where you can take some burdens off his back that are unnecessary to put on him or, or not needed to put on him. That's where it's going to create a, a better balance. Now, again, of course, because I know some of y'all are saying, but if I'm working too, this is where we have to create a balanced structure between the two parties and everybody has to figure out how they can feed into this together. But I guess those examples that I gave were more specific to the man's making the money. He is paying for everything. The woman's home. And this is how she can make it a better home. All right. So <clears throat> the due to the length of the video right now, I'm going to run through these last three. But I do think I'm going to have to do like a part two where I can dive deeper into some of these other things. All right. But let's run through the list real quick. The, la- the next one is when you're dating a man with money, typically his standards are higher. All right. So you simply have to understand that this is a and this is not to put this guy on a pedestal, so to speak. But it is to understand that the man with money typically has options typically has access to high quality women, all right? And because of that, he's not going to be as willing to settle. He's not going to be as willing to go beneath what he feels is necessary to have in his life and in a partner. So his standards are going to be higher. I do see sometimes women, and, and maybe not when they're dating them, but I see family and friends trying to tell that high, that, that uh, the man who makes money who may be a family and friend to them, Oh, why don't you lower your standards? Why don't you try this? Or why don't you give this one? And it's like, listen, at, at that point in his life, he's less likely to do that. All right. But if you are a woman who's dating him or you want to date a man with money, you've got to understand that coming in. You're not going to have the same leeway with this guy that you have with other men. All right. I, I, I even go as far as to say this. And this is a very personal opinion here. I, from what I've seen, I feel like when men start to make six figures, something psychologically switches in their head. It's almost like they feel like they've arrived. And now because I've arrived, well, it's like I'm the king and bring the king what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this different mentality that clicks in once he crosses a certain financial uh, standard or financial level. So. And I'm not here to say whether that's right or wrong. I'm just saying I, I, it's what I've seen with a lot of guys. All right. But bottom line is dating a man with money, you got to understand his standards are typically going to be higher. And so the last two, we're going to kind of combine these two. All right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you what they both are and then I'm going to break it down. So one is standards are higher. So his tolerance is lower. And then the last thing, actually, let me just dive right into that real quick. Lower tolerance, plain and simple. Don't think you can play games with this man, all right? And I say that to simply mean sometimes women, depending on the type of guys you've been dealing with, let's just say, for example, you know, you haven't heard from him, so rather than call him, you you play the I'm just going to wait for him to call me game, okay? And I say game because you, rather than just calling him or just expressing your concern or how you're feeling, you want to sit back and wait. And, and what with this kind of guy... There's a greater chance of him just it's like, okay, you, you want to play this game? All right, I'm done. Like I he does not have time to engage in any kind of nonsense. He needs transparency. He needs someone who's gonna keep it real with him, be on the same page with him. You know what I'm saying? If he's if he's been forthcoming in his intentions and all these things from the jump, he's gonna want that in return. And when he can't get that same kind of uh transparency in return. He's not going to be as quick to stick around as maybe some other guys might be willing to deal with certain things. And again, that's something that I got to do a whole other video on and dive deeper into. And then the last thing that I need to mention is just when you are dating a man with money, you really have to ask yourself, are you confident and secure enough to be with him? And that simply boils down to this guy is going to be a desired man. 
And if you are lacking confidence as a woman, that can be a very difficult situation to be in. Again, I've seen a lot of women struggle or even sabotage these types of relationships because of their insecurities. Not insecurities that he created, insecurities that they brought into this relationship and they struggle to feel secure and, and valuable enough based on their own perception being with a man like this, all right? And so you want to make sure that if you're going to be dealing with this kind of caliber of a guy, that you get to a place of confidence and security and that you are healed so you can experience an amazing relationship with him. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Do you desire a masculine man? I think if I could see you right now, many of you have raised your hand or you're nodding your head or you said a big yes when I asked that question. And I think most of us would agree that 